guys today we're going to talk about a sort of an autumn palette like the colors of autumn so uh, the other night after I'd actually you know painted the autumn leaves I still kind of wanted to explore some of the color um, combinations and things that I had sort of done there so I wanted to mix a few of them so this is actually from sort of last weekend and I wasn't sure if I'd upload this or not but uh, I thought that some of you might be interested especially because I'm using Bordeaux in a few mixes that I quite like here so the first one I mixed there was Potter's Pink and the Bordeaux so you can again use like a Peril and Violet and then this next one is Roasted French Ochre and Daniel Smith Moonstone which you could use like a Burnt Sienna and a bit of Pearl White with a little bit of a black or grey mixed in. The next one is Potter's Pink and Moonstone and so I just, I was really loving these colours so I, what I did for the mixes was I actually took out the uh, lemon yellow, the, the so the the yellow and the two oranges, the organic uh, vermilion and the pyrrole orange. And then I used all the other colors that we'd done to create these mixes. And I think we're just left with a really beautiful palette here. So this one here is the hematite with the Bordeaux and you get this really gorgeous uh, color. So the next one here is the Bordeaux and the Moonstone. So you can see here I've mixed the Moonstone with the Roasted French Ochre, with the Potter's Pink and now with the Bordeaux and I love it with everything. I've mixed it before with the Hematite which I really love. So the next one is French Ochre with the Bordeaux and you can see that there's several different ways that you can create mixing charts. So you could actually just create a little chart for all of these but I've just um, kind of mixing them on the paper how I you know in the or really in a random order just when I think of which mix I want to look at so next we have the German green raw umber and the French ochre and it makes a really beautiful sort of softer olive green so I use the German green raw umber as my olive green but this makes a even a softer version and then so my plan for this one was to do the French ochre with roasted French ochre but I ended up putting Potter's Pink down accidentally so it actually sort of be ends up being a three color uh, swatch but it's quite beautiful. If you've seen my other videos you know the next one is no surprise as well so this is Hematite with French ochre and I love to use this for old buildings to kind of create the, um, the, the stonework. So the next one is Opera Rose and the German Green Raw Umber. These two should neutralize each other fairly well. So I feel like I need to re-mix uh, them a little bit better and try that again. The next one is a beautiful one, Roasted French Ochre and Potter's Pink. And again, you can use like a Burnt Sienna and Potter's Pink. And you can probably tell from my videos and mixes this year, I've been really loving the Violet Earths and the like Rose Ochres this year. So the next one is the German Green Raw Umber with the Moonstone. And I feel like everything with the Moonstone gives it a really nice, soft, subtle, makes it a little bit more neutral and um, just really pretty. I feel like taking the yellows and the oranges out of this sort of color palette really makes it um, almost takes it into winter a little bit but it makes it really versatile for any time it's just a really pretty palette oh when I just did do some videos uh, you might have seen them or you might not have seen them yet but over on heirloom Lux, I did a couple of videos just showing how I form the letters and how I write um, the calligraphy kind of that I create and use in my color swatches so I know a lot of you have asked about that so um, I wanted to do those for you and I know that some of you have uh, purchased the uh, alphabet sheets which I really can't thank you enough for and um, yeah so there's a little bit of sort of help over there about those and I'm happy to do any more you know videos on that if you need them. So I think that is about it. I did actually, I turned the camera off and then um, I was doing something else. Then when I came back, I just sat down and did this 
a sort of flower on the next page I just wanted to try out some of these mixes in an actual painting but I, I didn't have the camera set up at that stage um, but I've used kind of the techniques in the transparent florals so if you haven't seen those videos uh, it, I've used the same kind of things to create these flowers and then I went over it with the Winsor & Newton gold ink and the dip pen and also it's basically only three weeks three and a bit weeks until December so I'm really hoping that I can do uh, sort of a vlogmas on December but I want to do a little tutorial so I want to try and have some tutorials filmed and then do some vlogging on the day as well so that you have something um, that's really nice to kind of do on that day that's art related and then maybe like some behind the scenes of real life as well so I'm hoping I can do that and um, yeah so the <laughs> all this to say uh, this month might be a few shorter videos while I'm trying to get um, all these things done but I hope that's okay and I'm still trying to provide like good content and things that you'll enjoy um, but it just might be a little bit uh, shorter I'm still trying to put them out as often as I can so I will hopefully see you guys soon probably on Saturday with the announcement of the winners of the um, giveaway so I know a lot of you love the little bits of footage at the end with the, you know whatever animals are around at the time so these are actually some raccoons we used to feed at our old house that's where the um, footage always comes from over the valley so we don't live there anymore but I thought you might like to see the raccoons and um, the mum the dad used to come then the mum came and then they brought back all the babies so these are the babies I hope you enjoy it and I will see you guys soon bye